explain your paddle, Gordon. Uh, this paddle is a Sawyer banjo. It's actually narrower than it originally was. It used to have about another inch on each side. And I picked this up in Atacokan, Ontario in about 1978 when I was a university student working at Voyager Wilderness Program. And uh, it was the thing to have. Everybody had a banjo. Why? Because that was the paddle to have. But and it was, it moved a lot of water and it pushed those aluminum canoes through Quetico Park just nicely. So do you think it was a regional thing at the time? Like that's, you needed to push a lot of water because of big lakes in Quetico? There was more water than Port Uh Well, there was a very, I would say it was because of the influence of the Minnesota race, canoe racing heritage on paddlers in Quetico, even the Quetico Park Rangers that we saw at those times were paddling with wider blades, Canadian paddles, Clements they used, but wide blades, short shaft, kind of like a bent shaft but not bent, but they paddled in hit and switch racing style, covered a lot of ground. And uh, the people that were ran Voyager Wilderness Program were kind of part of that Minnesota heritage and kind of came from there. And uh, so we just thought it seemed like the right thing to do. And it wasn't until I came back to Southern Ontario and took this on a canoe trip in Algonquin and all my friends were making fun of me. And I thought, well, maybe there's a way, a different way to paddle. So what is the different way? What, what would you use in Algonquin now? What's sort of regional for Algonquin at this point in time? Can I zip in yeah. and grab it? I'll disappear into my magic tent. This is tickle trunk. <laughs> This is my favorite tripping paddle right now. Uh, it's a Nash walk, sadly out of print. Um, made by a guy named Jeff Solway back in the, I don't know, late 90s maybe. And uh, it's, I, I don't know if there's a name for the blade shape other than Nash walk. It's kind of a sort of beaver tail maybe. And it has a really nice bit of flex to it. It just it just moves water really nicely as a tripping paddle. It has a nice kick and a different kind of grip, what he called the Omer Stringer style grip, which allows you some different hand positions and uh, just it just feels really good in the water and you can move a lot of water. I, I even have spent a lot of time paddling with bench shaft paddles, but I this is my personal favorite canoe tripping paddle. And I have a lot of paddles, probably 30. So, I have some choice. Of course you have to choose the one you can't get anymore, right? Yeah, it is too bad. This, um, after, after Jeff Solway stopped making paddles, he did, I guess, license the shape to uh, the Redtail Paddle Company. And they made a, a version of this shape, but it just wasn't the same. Now, so uh, the big question is, do you think the paddle um, choice uh, is more connected to you than actually the boat you're using? Mm, yeah, I do. Uh, it's a good question. But yeah, I always think the paddle is your connection to the water. And um, it sort of doesn't matter what kind of canoe you're in to a large degree, even though I have a lot of strong opinions about canoes as well. Um, but it's the paddle that, that connects you to the water that, that, get, that moves you. And it's like any piece of sporting equipment, you know, it, it, it's, it's your main tool to, to make that action happen. And if it's not a good one, you're not going to perform very well. Uh, Skiing is another good example. I always think when I, I'm a skier, and I think that, especially in cross-country skiing, the boots are way more important than the skis, because it's the boot that connects your body to the ski, and it's the paddle that connects your body to the water. 